Hey guys, in this video, you're going to learn how to create a tic-tac-toe game with Phaser 3. Okay, now this is going to be a multiplayer game locally, meaning that you can play with you and your kid, you and your wife on your phone directly. And you can say, hey man, check this out. Let me play you, let me beat you, etc. Right now, there's going to be animations, there's going to be audio, there's going to be logic, and there's going to be all of the concepts that I've been teaching you guys in the past videos of the basics of Phaser 3. So now we're going to put everything into practice. Okay, I'm going to come here, I'm going to unmute this so you guys could actually hear uh, the sound. I'm going to refresh this. Okay. I like the little music, man. Hey, 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 dad, dad. <laughs> I like the song, man. Okay, so from there, we're going to come here, click start. Then automatically, you get the next scene. All right. Let me mute this because the music is a little bit too loud on my computer. So, okay. So basically, you're going to be able to come here, go like that. There's a sound every single time that you go and choose another box. We could come here like this, uh, do this like that, do this like this, do this like that. X wins, play again. Same thing, we could come here and do something like this. Okay, like that, like that, like that, like that. Zero wings. Okay, so pretty much everything that you could do in tic-tac-toe game, okay, with some nice animation, some nice sound, okay, everything that you need to get started. All right, now I'm providing you guys with all of the images and the audio and everything that we have here is open source you can go ahead and check it out on what's the website opengameart.org all you have to do is come here browse to the art there's a bunch of to the art that you can check out uh, there's also a bunch of sound effects and music that people post up that they've created so definitely take advantage of this website is pretty legit all right so we're going to start by going to github.com, okay? You're going to search for slash codingphase.com, okay? Just like that, codingphase, D-O-T-C-O-M, all right? And you're going to scroll to the side, and you're going to see this thing that says Phaser Game Starter Kit. Hey, guys, if you use my Phaser Game Starter Kit, make sure you give me a star, okay? Show me some love. So basically this is very simple all we're gonna do is come here we're gonna download this click download zip okay open this up then from there we're gonna come here to this phaser game starter kit dash master we're gonna rename this again okay? we're gonna rename this to tick tack toe uh, game okay so from there we're gonna come here drag this into our projects right so make sure you drag everything meaning the whole folder because there's some hidden files that you need okay if you're on windows or you are in other computers sometimes if you just select all of the files and try to drag the files themselves into another folder you're gonna miss out on a couple of hidden files so just drag the whole folder rename it and put it to your projects folder okay it's better to do it like that now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to click here go to projects tic-tac-toe game okay and we're going to open up our terminal if you guys are on pc i always tell you guys use bash ubuntu okay or this another one was a git bash i think another like terminal that they have for for windows also too for anybody that's having issues uh we're doing the starter kit if you go to codingphase.com all right uh there's a, a couple of people that have had some issues with it so let's go to courses okay let's go to courses uh preview as logged in user okay search for uh, phaser okay click on phaser okay and let's see getting started okay all right guys so now to get started there you go <laughs> okay so pretty much 
follow along what's here. You do npm install, npm install, gulp. You know, it has to be this version, 3.9.1 dash G. Okay. npm install webpack dash G, npm install webpack CLI dash G. Okay. Now, uh, thanks to your boy Juan Lopez, he also found that for the people that are having issues with good old phaser or good old gulp on their computer this is for windows for mac you don't have no issues but for windows users it seems like by running npm install har dash validator at latest dash dash save dash dev then basically it works perfectly okay so as you can see nathan daniel says i did this and it worked for me it says my firewall they pop up asking to give node access so yeah i guess you gotta give access to node.js um maybe the firewalls are stopping you to to getting everything and i think that might be the reason why some of you guys might be having some issues so yeah follow along with this now like i said for mac users all you have to do is come to your terminal go to the location where you have your project so for me is cd and then the home and then i have projects slash tic tac toe dash game okay and then here for all of you guys that are watching this make sure you don't have gulp 4. if you have gulp 4 in your local environment or your global environment you have to make sure you put in 3.9.1 okay so all you have to do is come here and say go dash v and you will see cli version 3.9.1 now let's get started we're going to say npm install okay and this is going to install everything that we need and get us started okay very simple also guys i want you guys to download the assets so come here okay refresh the page it should show up now all right okay scroll all the way down and in this section you should see a thing that says project assets okay so download the zip and the zip file should have all of these files your audio and your sprites okay so let's get to it we're gonna come here do npm run watch okay and then now come over here as you can see this is the phase of three started kit now we're gonna come here and we're gonna do some changes okay so let me open up my atom click here uh, where is it atom new window okay the file open and let's go to projects tic-tac-toe game okay click open and then from there let's open this up a little bit you know what leave it like that yeah okay so you guys can see everything and you can see the window so now we're going to go to public okay we have our assets this is where our game is currently located we got our javascript and we have our scenes and we're going to have all of our other assets in there so come here new finder window go to projects go to tic-tac-toe game okay go to public go to assets okay select the audio and the sprites put it in here okay and there you go and it's automatically as you can see this thing refreshes every time that this changes inside of our project so we always going to see the latest thing okay now the next thing we're going to do we're going to go to index.js okay this is where our initial javascript is going to be located and what we're going to do here is we're going to set this up to be 180 by 320 
Okay. Now we're working with a pixels type of game, right? So, uh, this is like the old school way of doing games, right? Back in the days, if you was doing a Mario game, it will be like on a lower res resolution. So this is the same thing that we're doing now. Okay. Because all the assets are with pixels. They're like really small. They're like 36 pixels or no 32 pixels by 32. So we want to make sure that the width and the height is, is also at that same ratio. Okay. Which is, I believe 16 by nine. I'm pretty sure, you, could, you know, don't quote me on it, but I'm pretty sure it's 16 by nine. So let's say for example, um, I got these numbers because if we do, let's say something like this, like 1280, oops, we do 1280. Okay. Divided by two, 640. Okay. Divided by two, 320, which is where we at right now. This is the resolution that we're in. Okay. Now this is the same ratio. If we was to do, uh, let's say 1080p, we could say 1080p. If we wanted like a really high resolution, you will come here and say divided by two, 540 divided by two, 270. Okay. It will do the same job. Okay. So for us, I just have it at 180. It's easier. Okay. So let's get started. Now we're going to come down here. We're going to save this. Okay. And as you can see, now we have a vertical game. Now, one thing that you're going to notice is that as you can see the the text now is too big for this this game okay because we're working with a, a smaller resolution and also you're going to notice that back in the days if you was to say scale right there was a scale manager that was working with phaser now the latest version right now i believe we're using phaser 3.15 Okay, so we're still waiting for phaser 3.16. Most likely this will work. Okay, now because this is not working currently right now, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to come here and we're going to do a little hack. Okay, we're going to do a little hack to make sure that this thing scales properly. So what we're going to do, I'm going to copy something here for you guys. Okay. And let's do this. Okay. I'm going to paste this in. Okay. And I'm also going to paste this in for you guys. And let's go over the code. Okay. So we're basically going to run this function resize. Okay. This is a function that we're creating. And we're basically choosing the canvas. Then from there, we're saying the width, inner width, um, height, inner height. Okay, um, with ratio windows, well, width divided by height. Okay, let the ratio equals to gain config that width divided by gain config that height. Okay, if W ratio is less than the ratio, then we're gonna say canvas that style that width, width plus pixels. So, what this is going to change is the width of the canvas itself. Okay. And then over here it says canvas uh, else canvas style that width is going to be height times ratio plus pixels, which is just going to be whatever this is in total um, is going to be in pixels. And we're setting up the styles for the canvas. Okay. Then we're saying when the windows load, we're going to resize. Okay. And let me delete this because we no longer need this. We're going to say windows resize. And then on the window, we adding an event listener for resize, and then it's going to run resize. Okay. And we're passing in false. Now we're going to save this. Okay. And as you can see, now this thing is going, you know, as big as the screen can get. Okay. So at the same time, keeping the same ratio. So we're going to come here, move this to the side. And as you can see, it'll resize too. Now, next thing we want to do, we want to go to the CSS. Okay. I want you guys to go. Let me see if I can move this on top. Yes. Okay. We're going to go to the public. Create a new folder called CSS. 
okay in here we're going to say new file main.css okay and then now we're going to come here paste this in the body we're just saying margin zero padding zero if you have a css reset you can also just put in your css reset and it should be fine um i'm going to center this just for debugging purposes just i want it to be centered no matter what so i'm going to say display flex justify content center align item center height 100 percent we're going to save this okay and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come to the index and we're going to load this so come here go to css slash main.css save that and let's refresh that and as you can see now we have full screen all right yeah man so full screen kids okay so now if you want to test this out you can make this into mobile okay and this is for mobile uh, there's definitely some sizes that it works perfectly as long as the ratio is uh, 16 by 9 um, some situations where you might have bigger phones like let's say the iPhone 10 like the ratio for it is is definitely way bigger than that okay so for example you will see a situation like this where you have white space uh, this is something that you can definitely tweak later on you could say okay whenever I'm at a iPhone right resize the the screen to this certain size okay so you could actually go in there and do that with javascript okay this is the ipad how it will look on ipad uh ipad pro okay um at the same time we have let's say a pixel 2 looks perfect because that's the ratio okay uh pixel 2 xl iphone 5 se you got iphone 6 see like the ratio is fine okay same thing as the galaxy s5 or any galaxy out there is going to work exactly how it's supposed to now like i said guys this is just javascript you can always come in here and put an if statement for any size that you want any height that you want you can definitely tweak it as much as you like it's javascript okay <laughs> now for the people that are watching this and you want to take this course and you're already a member of codingface.com or you're not a member or you just want to buy the course all you have to do is go to all courses right click there then come here and search phaser okay and then from there click there and there you go kids you have everything that you need you learn all of the basics you learn how to work with tiles you learn how to work with sprites you learn how to work with audio and then now we're working on the projects okay so I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.